Hello, I'm Anna and I'm Zoe and we work for the West Country Rivers Trust. In this series of videos we're going to talk you through conducting a West Country Citizen Science Investigation Survey. Every time you arrive on site it's important that we undertake a dynamic risk assessment. That means that when we arrive we're just going to have a look around and see if there are any risks and make sure it's safe for us to conduct our survey. So first of all, I'm just going to have a quick look at the water level, make sure it's safe for me to access the water and the, the uh, water speed and height is not dangerous for me to approach it. I'm also just going to have a look around and make sure, for example, if you're sampling from a field that there are no livestock around and if you're on a main road that you have your high-vis jacket on. So once we've just assessed the risks around us and we feel safe to conduct the survey, then you can go ahead with your dry run survey or your full water quality measurements. So once you have signed up to the CSI scheme, we'll ask you to go out and complete a dry run of your survey site. So first of all, when you go to your site, you'll have to make sure that it's safe and accessible. So it's on public land or you've got landowner permission and the water is safe to access. Here the, we've got a nice shallow river bank and we could collect water with a bucket quite easily. So once you've checked out your site, you'll then go through the dry run survey form, which is completing everything on the survey form minus your water quality measurements. Um, so the first thing we fill in is the survey details for the site name. So this is the River Foy that we're on today. And then you'll add your location, which will have probably been given to you when you were allocated your survey site. But if not, just pick a nearby landmark that you can remember your site by um, and then you'll fill in your grid reference which will have been given to you if you were allocated a site by us or you can use the um, map on cartographer once you've uploaded the survey form to click your site and select your grid reference we'll then complete our date and time and put your name on the survey form so then the next question is type of water body so the options are river stream lake pond or estuary. Um, this is a river here. Um, and then we've got rain in the previous 24 hours. So there's an option for, for none, for light or for heavy and prolonged rain. Um, and if you know the area, you'll be able to fill that in quite easily, or you can check online um, and see whether it's rained recently. So here we've had heavy or prolonged rain. And then we move on to the ecosystem observations. So the first question is the dominant land use within 50 metres. Here we have woodland and then we have the bankside vegetation. So here we have trees and shrubs. But next we have problem plant species. So this is any problem plants, invasive, non-native species. Um, there is a guide to them in our manual, but we have a few options here. Um, we've got Himalayan balsam, Japanese knotweed, giant hogweed, skunk cabbage, curly waterweed and floating pennywort. Um, but here on this site we've got none. And then we have wildlife spotted. So you might not necessarily see any wildlife straight away when you get to your survey site, but um, I like to just take five minutes and sit and wait and see if anything comes to us. Next section is evidence of pollution. And the first question in that section is pollution sources. So this is things like outfalls, um, collapsed riverbanks, having livestock access to the river, grey water for misconnections, road runoff um, and farm runoff. But we don't have any of that here, which is good to see. Sometimes you might spot something that you think is a pollution source but isn't on the list. So you can put that in the other section. And then we have evidence of recent pollution. So that's any signs that a pollution incident has occurred recently. So we've got things like sewage related litter, normal litter, unpleasant odours, oily sheens, sewage fungus, foam and smothering algae. But again, here we have none of those. The final section are the river channel observations. So the first in that section is channel dimensions so we have the average width of the river so there's no need to get in the river for this but just have a good guess i'd say about nine meters here and then we have the estimated average depth so this is the average depth across the water and again no need to get into the water but you can just have a look and i think this is probably about 0.8 of a meter so 
it's really important here, this measurement's in metres. Next, we have the flow conditions. So steady water is about walking speed if you're walking along the bank of the river. And then we have surging, which is faster than water walking speed, slow is slower than walking speed, and then still. And here we have a steady river, I'd say. And then we've got our obstacles to fish or flow. So this is if there's anything in the river blocking the flow of the water or that might be blocking fish getting upstream. And we have none here. And then we have our water level. So this might be hard to know when you first start going to your site, but you should start getting a good idea of what's normal in your area. Um, and you can also look at recent rainfall to see whether the water level might be high or low. You can also sometimes tell by looking at the river banks if there's a high water mark or if the water looks lower than that. Um, I'd say here is about average. And then finally, we have our predominant substrate. So this is the materials at the bottom of the river. Um, there are a few different options depending on the size of the stones, but here we have just normal stones, I think. So that's your survey form complete. And once you have submitted it to Cartographer, we will approve it and then you'll go on the list to receive your kit and you can start doing your water quality measurements after that. So once you have had your dry run approved and you've received your kit, you'll then be able to go out and start taking water quality samples. There are a few different things that you can use to collect your water quality sample, but obviously we ask you not to go in the river, so you'll need some way of being able to reach the water. Here I have a bucket on a long rope, which works really well for lots of people, and they're also useful if you're collecting a sample from a bridge, because you can lower it down. But here I'm just going to throw the bucket out and collect my sample and pull it back in. You only need to collect about a litre, a litre and a half of water, so you don't need a big bucket. Um, this will do nicely here. When you receive your sampling kit, it will look like this. Inside we have our turbidity tube, which has a black and white disc on the bottom and a number scale up the side. We have a pot of phosphate strips and a test tube, which we'll use to measure those. We have our TDS meter, which also measures temperature and some hand sanitizer for when we finish sampling. So the first thing I'm going to measure is the turbidity. So that's the water clarity. So the way that we measure this is put our turbidity tube down somewhere nice and flat. And we're going to gently pour the water in looking down to see if we can still see the pattern on the black and white disc. The water here is very clear, so I can still see the pattern on the bottom. So I'm going to record this as 12 or less than 12, as that's the number at the top here. If the water was less clear, it might be somewhere lower down. Um, and the bottom, the scale goes from 240. So if it's somewhere down there, then it's a very, very turbid, not very clear water. So next, I'm going to measure total dissolved solids and temperature. So I turn this one on, take the cap off and pop it in the water. The TDS meter can take a minute to settle, so we'll just hold it still in the water. Once it's settled, I'll press the hold button at the top, the screen will flash and we can see a value of 41. If I press the temperature button in the middle, making sure we're in degrees C, we have a reading of 16.3. So we're finished with that one, I can turn it off. I'm just going to shake the water out of there and pop the lid back on. The final thing we're measuring is our phosphate. So I've got the small test tube here. I'm just going to give it a quick rinse out. So fill it up gently and tip the water out. Okay, and then we want to fill it up to 10 millilitres, which is just below the wider section here. I'll pop the cap on. I'm going to make sure my hands are dry. And take out a phosphate strip. Just 
So on here, we have one long pad and two smaller ones. I'm going to bend it between them so that they're facing each other. And I'm going to just slot that into the cap, like so. The cap goes on, and I'm going to invert the tube five times fully. So the bubble needs to move all the way to the top. So that's one. Okay. Now I can take the cap off, discard the tube, uh, discard the strip. And we're looking at the color of the water, not the color that's on the strip. So if I take my tube here, I can see it's got a color scale with blank squares underneath. I'm going to hold the test tube over the blank squares and look down it and see which colour matches up best. So in this case, I'd say the reading is zero. If it's anywhere in between the two colours, we record at the lowest one. Once that's finished, we can discard the water onto the bank so that it can soak through. Uh, before it enters back into the river. So once you've done all of that, you can add it to your survey film, upload the results to Cartographer. <laughs> once you upload your survey into Cartographer, it comes to us for approval. There are a few things that we frequently see that need editing on these surveys. So firstly, make sure your grid reference is correct on your survey form. You can either find your grid reference by using the map on Cartographer and clicking on your survey site and it will generate a grid reference for you. Or there are lots of websites online that you can use to help you find grid references, such as Grid Reference Finder. It's also important to make sure that you don't leave anything blank in your survey. For example, if you don't see any wildlife, there is an option to click none rather than just leaving that blank because it can leave room for misinterpretation. Often we find that photos don't upload correctly, so once you've uploaded your photos, make sure that they are loaded on the form before you submit it to us, otherwise they won't come through. And when you're adding your temperature and total dissolved solids, make sure that the temperature reading has a decimal place, but the dissolved solids is a whole number. On your phosphate measurements, make sure that if your reading is sort of between two numbers, you go for the lower number and making sure you're looking at the colour change in the tube itself and not the colour change of the strips. And with the turbidity measurements, make sure that the black and white Secchi disc cap is on the end that says 240. If it's on the other end, it will make it look like the water is really, really turbid when actually it's very clear. Sometimes you won't be able to take water quality measurements, maybe because the river is in spate or because you've run out of some testing equipment. In these cases, just leave the sections of the survey form you can't complete blank rather than filling them in with zero. Um, and you can leave a note at the bottom of the survey form explaining why you're missing the readings.